Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there. Hello there, guys. Wow, what a beautiful day it's turning into, uh, albeit it was very, very foggy early on. And we did this one this morning. It feels like yesterday already. It's been such a full day. Oh, I know, I know. I mean, it started out to be like a really creepy beginning of the day. I think around 2.30 or 3. It was so weird. And then the fog kind of remained and remained and remained. And it's finally lifted. Absolutely. And this one's on Patreon only. And we do encourage everybody, if you are so inclined to support the channel and our work trying to awaken as many as possible on this planet, you can join for as little as $1 on month and when you pay in advance uh you save 10 percent. so it breaks down to about 2.9 cents a day 2.9 pennies a day and it does definitely help us to keep going and doing our focus on all the craziness going on and sharing with you guys the things that come through from the guides and you know more information was coming through of a channeled nature that we share it over here on Patreon. Again, everybody, I would most definitely encourage you guys to uh, stock up and, you know, check your preps and do whatever you can to get ready for whatever is going to come because it is kind of crazy out there. There are really good signs at the same time as all the chaos. And so, you know, there is an awakening going on. We have to direct our energies into exposing for the masses that are still kind of sleepwalking zombies exactly what is really going on. Well, you know what I really like about Patreon is we can speak a little more bluntly. It's a little bit safer to get the information out there for right now. So that's why we like getting some of this stuff up. It's not as suppressed. It's just it gets out to who needs it. And it does feel that there is more of an awakening going on right now. And yet, um, you know, there is still the censorship which comes through and uh, the demonization. So this is from Greg Abbott himself. Fire levels have intensified in Texas Panhandle due to windy and dry conditions. Texas continues to surge resources to respond to these historic wildfires. Remain vigilant and heed the guidance of local officials to keep yourself and your loved ones safe. As you see the two outlooks here, you know, what I am noticing, I'm going to touch on in a second when we end up shifting, but you can see even just from this, the danger zone is shifting a little northward. So that's something to make a note of. Uh, again, these times are, we're going to be facing perils anywhere we go. This is from Reed Timmer, critical fire danger across the Southern High Plains today and tomorrow from Denver through the Texas Panhandle. And when we think of Denver, I think of all the reports I've seen of people speaking of just massive amounts of, again, the illegal immigrants in the area that's becoming such a, a problem, again, in all the big metros. And so winds will be the strongest across the northern edge of the risk area. Team Dominator will be focusing on fire weather this weekend as he is one of the ones uh, that we keep an eye on on a regular basis. As you can see, this is going uh, into Oklahoma, obviously, uh, Texas, yes, back over into New Mexico, uh, just even including Santa Fe and Albuquerque. Two, pay, two places that Cindy and I know well, and then up into, again, Denver, even as far up as Cheyenne, Wyoming. Maybe we'll see Cheyenne in the future. Mm. And we have another train derailment. Mm -hmm. This one's in uh, near three Norfolk Southern trains near Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Spilled some diesel fuel and plastic pellets along the Lehigh River on Saturday morning. Tankers and boxcars involved. Locomotives are actually in the river. You know, I mean, this is really horrible. Absolutely horrible. But, of course, what jumps out to me on this is <laughs> near Bethlehem. Near Bethlehem. I mean, we're in a time where things are truly like the... It's symbolic. It is so symbolic to me. It just jumped right out at me. And uh, it's kind of weird. There's a function, you know, we've seen so many dump into a river because yeah. obviously they, there's a group that wants to pollute all the water. They've also spoken recently 
about, and, and some of them have even come straight out and say, well, you know, maybe the public doesn't get, uh, doesn't get climate change, but they'll understand water. Yeah. It's pretty simple. You know, water is a basic need. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And we have poisoned water supplies all over the globe. Doesn't have to be that way. No, it absolutely does not have to be that way. But this is a long term plan that they've had. And, you know, I really want to encourage people to keep uh, pushing back even even at a definitely at an energetic level, because that I kind of feel it's making a difference. I think it is. So the San Vicente migrant camp in Darien Gap in, Pen- in Panama, which has been so uh, highlighted, seems that there was a major incident there. A lot of people have done Im- uh, immigrant interviews at this point, and there's been a lot of information that's come out from this point exposing everything that's really going on. Well, there was a riot and some sort of revolt by migrants that ended up setting the whole place on fire and even attacked uh, officials from Panama inside the camp. Hmm. Again, talking about all the Chinese and Islamic migrants coming on through so, yeah, of course, the, you know, we're, we're all catching on too fast for what the control system is doing. Meanwhile, we have that massive snowstorm, and the snow is really piling up in the Sierra Nevadas. Could be 10 to 12 feet or maybe even more in some spots. Hundreds of cars were stranded on I-80 near the Donner Summit. And we were talking about you know the east to west and the north to south main uh, ways of getting across the country. And, you know, again, look to see if you notice a lot of uh, a lot of places getting basically cut off from each other. This is a debate in, in the Bolivian Congress gone haywire as they're literally going to blows. This shows you, you know, our political situation is not the only one that's volatile at this time. It's all around, all over the the globe, because they are turning up the screws on the whole human population. At the same time, people are waking up to what has actually been going on. And, you know, look for revolutions all over the place. Look for people overthrowing their governments all around the globe at some point in time. And here again, Israeli troops open fire on Palestinian people trying to get resources that are being attempting to be dropped off to them. They go to grab critical food and water because you know, people are, are literally on the verge of starving to death in Gaza and they get shot at. This is just so blatantly evil. There's there's no other word for it. It's just so blatantly evil. It's as evil as it's the same sort of evil that we saw in WW2 with those camps, you know. Uh huh. And meanwhile, Alaskan fishermen find another suspected <laughs> balloon, probably from China. This one uh, had crashed and and off the coast of Alaska. So many people were making connections uh, with certain activities that happen around or after we see these balloons. You know, there's also reports of what's obviously Chinese uh, illegal immigrants and also what's obviously Russian ones uh, speaking together and seeming like they're organizing together in the border areas. Mm -hmm. Unconfirmed unconfirmed but still you know i mean why why is our entire government totally quiet and complacent you know when there's things labeled chinese spy balloon in the sky above our land you know <laughs> why is everybody so quiet you know everybody is snoozing on it every everybody in the government or they might say something about it but what it's, does that do they it, don't do anything it's it's not going anywhere because it's not supposed to go anywhere You know, they're supposed to give you all the fluff and the hubbub. And I can't believe this is happening. Meanwhile, you know, they're probably all still getting together for drinks later on and and doing even worse things than just, you know, drinking themselves to oblivion. Much worse, much, much, much worse. 
this is the reality. The system has never been for us. It's never been for, for humanity. It's always been about controlling humanity, letting humanity think they actually control the planet, but they've never controlled the planet. You know, again, I, I think one of the people that has looked the most insane, but probably is the most one of the most sane is, is David Icke again. And what's he doing now? He's calling out, yes, Mr. X himself mm -hmm. saying, you know, can't you see what's going on? And still there are people that are blind and they, they just don't want to see, I think, is more more like not that they can't see. They just don't want to see uh, because they, they don't want to face what the ultimate reality is. No, I mean, it's too hard. Cognitive dissonance is another, it can be used as a weapon, very much so. And that's where a lot of people are. They're in a cognitive dissonance and they just can't believe that somebody who is supposed to be their hero could actually be so evil. But that's that's a lot of people's downfalls is they think that certain beings cannot be this horrible. They cannot be that bad. This is not possible, but it is. It very, very much is the truth that if certain entities have an agenda and they want to fulfill said agenda they will lie they will lie they'll lie like rugs they'll lie till the cows come home they will just that's you know if their lips are moving they'll lie to reach their agenda and that's what we're dealing with and people are just finding it hard to believe absolutely and here you have a judge blocking law allowing texas police to arrest migrants so that they could actually be sent back uh so again, there's always going to be people that will be working for the system, uh, can't you know, accept bribes willingly, et cetera, et cetera. China's issued a nationwide directive to erase all plague upon the land data from the healthcare system. Ah, yes, again. And this is what is done to our entire history. Then they rewrite the history. Then they construct uh, even full religious systems for people to follow later on from some remnants of other uh, beings that came in other systems. This is why we see the same echoes throughout history. And here you have Xi and uh, Trudeau. And it's, it's obvious, you know, that you could look at it like he colluded with the Chinese government by trading top secret information during the plague upon the, the land, he's still in power. He's still in power. The reality is they work for the same system. They work for the same system. And, you know, again, even apparent opposition works for the same system. So Mitch McConnell stepping down in case you missed that. His wife, Elaine Chow, former transportation secretary, and sister Angela were very involved in the global shipping industry. Their father emigrated from China when Elaine was eight and founded the Foremost Group, a company that transfers products for blue ship clients all around the world. In fact, Angela was the CEO before her untimely death. Many have long suspected Elaine of possibly being a Chinese spy. Yeah, of course. Anyway, so you had plane crashes, auto accidents, all these things that are happening right now as, as you know she had had died now a criminal investigation is underway uh which is curious and and this leads us into thinking about this too thomas kingston who died suddenly well it appears he had it appears that he had a traumatic injury to the head and there happened to be a gun nearby mm. oh okay well was he gonna spill some beans was there something that you know he knew that you know or was he afraid of being outed? Either way you look at it, there's a lot. Uh, and I'll let Cindy run down. There's a lot of people of note that are either MIA or we know they've left recently. We, we talk about J Jacob Rothschild. And if we go back a little bit farther, you know, I mean, you, you've seen tons of these big families that are always mentioned as being a family uh, in perhaps uh, 12 or 13 of those families and people in very, very high insider places that seem to either all be heading to their bunkers, heading off planet, or really meeting some timely karma. Mm. It's, it's strange. I mean, there really is a lot. And this has kind of has my, my antennas up, definitely. Um, King Charles has been diagnosed with cancer. Kate Middleton 
has had abdom abdominal surgery and she has not been seen since December. That's the report. Sarah, Duchess of York, was diagnosed with skin cancer. Prince Edward is stepping back from royal duties. Uh, Thomas Kingston, who married into the British royal family, died suddenly. Uh, Jacob Rothschild died. Uh, King of Norway rushed to hospital with infection. Pope Francis, Francis rushed to hospital. Queen of Denmark announced uh, shock abdication. Uh, and then, you know, this was really weird. The two black horses were spotted with a captured white horse and black flag outside of Buckingham Palace. And the last time this happened, it was uh, two white horses capturing a black horse outside of Buckingham Palace right before World War II. So it just feels like things are going on and this is some of the stuff that we covered over there on patreon where we could speak a little more freely yeah there's a lot going on <clears throat> there is a lot going on a lot to keep up with former australian deputy chief health officer uh admits who got stuff wrong yeah it's a little late now but you know again i i think people are starting to think about those trials of a Nuremberg kind. Hmm. What if no candidate wins 270 electoral votes? The fact is, again, obviously everything is pre-planned and, you know, there might not be a uh, election for many reasons, including the fact that we, <laughs> we might be under attack and, you know, you might have success. You could, there's so much. But even if we did get to the actual election, the likelihood is right now you probably wouldn't have anybody get 270 even if you know the counting was completely above board Be because you know you're going to have Kennedy pull quite a few votes I think and you know Ross Perot uh, he got 20% of the vote way back um gosh what was that the 80 election I forget when that was but I do remember he got 20% and Clinton got like 43. So, you know, if they don't get 270, again, it goes to Congress and the House elects the president from the three highest um, people getting three highest vote totals, which would obviously be, again, either Biden or whoever's running, you know, for the Democrats if Biden doesn't make it that long. And you would have Trump and then you would have Kennedy. Well, you know, if the House can't agree uh, and come to a decision that 26 out of the 50 states agree on, the House needs to come to agreement with 26 of 50 states' delegations because each state will get one vote agreeing on which one to pick, which doesn't seem likely to me. You know, uh, the Senate's going to pick the VP. And it would go to the VP that the Senate picks, uh, basically acting as the president until there could be some sort of agreement on the actual president. So I mean, it's just a mess. It, it, it's just a mess. It's obviously been orchestrated to be that way. But, you know, again, um, my money is on the fact that I do I do think we'll be in direct um, confrontation be before November. Well, we're definitely keeping an eye on what's going on in the sky during the eclipse because these energies have power. They hold power to sway um, a lot of people. And, and the problem is that the controllers understand what power these comets and ships, planets have on people as well. And, and then they behave, they move forward with such information and knowledge. I think, you know, the best thing would be the, uh, the majority of the population saying uh, we vote against the system, period. So we're not going to vote, period. But we're not going to recognize the system either. And, you know, it could it's it's going to take something like that in a country to make the ball roll to where, you know, the, all the governments of the world of any significance end up being overthrown and toppled and replaced with something that's actually uh, free. <laughs> 
you know, as we look at the morning, morning dew, we saw a lot of morning dew, yeah, the morning dew, you know, again, this is war, it's, it's, a, it's a war on humanity, and, you know, here you have, they're still trying to get people to give up their properties in Hawaii, they're still trying to get people people to give up their idea of, of rebuilding and they're blaming everybody but the system but it, it was the system that obviously did this thank you joe for pointing out the roof color is really really important meanwhile two black hawk helicopters on camera this is durham north carolina accompanying a third bright craft curious you know there's a lot of activity going on Lots of things, because these are really the last times uh, before everything hits the fan. But again, I know we can change timelines. We can change timelines. It feels like we already have. And humanity is going to go down two different paths. You're going to have those that are going to be predatorial and those that are going to just stick their ne necks out to save others. And even the four-legged kind, as this guy jumped in, obviously frigid water to save this pup you know it, that's a beautiful thing how about this little one that is pure pleasure the love of mama what could be better yeah you're not going to get this uh being brought up by ai and some sort of incubator having a robot turn the baby every now and then that's 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 what they're envisioning for this world mm -hmm. it, it's yeah it's becoming very very mechanical to a very mechanical nature um, but we need to stick close to nature. <laughs> and this is just so cute because the little baby bear, he looks like the pups too. Like he fits right in and the dogs treat him like just like another pup too. And you know, while we're going through these tough times, we might run across some people that might be very, very different, but somehow some weird way, they just sort of kind of blend in. So we just accept them into the family. Yeah, we're going to have to get, you know, past appearances in many ways when we start to actually see and, and deal firsthand with extraterrestrial beings that won't look just quite like us. <laughs> That's for sure. As always, guys, thanks for your support. Much love, source bless, and namaste. Namaste.